I'm going to kind of keep okay. peddling well, to get no, there, answer, right? Pam, okay, so Pam, the answer is no. There will not be a responsible disclosure until it's regulated. The fact of the matter is there's too many players out there to both do it as a corporation, to respond quickly with their own fixing their own things, as we've seen with these ATMs, as we've seen with Mac compared to everybody else with DNS vulnerability. There's not going to be a consolidated way. All of a sudden, Juniper hires the guy that disclosed the Cisco vulnerability who worked at ISS. Then they have a, it's, now it's me, and they change their mind. So all of a sudden, it's OK to pull presentations when they had much more time to theoretically fix the thing. So there's not going to be anything, because right now it's a should, it's not a must, and people do whatever they damn well please when they don't have to do anything else. I think that, uh, you know, I think that there's absolute room for evolution here. You know, that's what we've been doing in this industry, right? We've been, we've been learning from, you know, from the mistakes of the past, the mistakes of ourselves and others, um, and there's, there's room for evolution and efficiencies, you know, that, that can be shared among, you know, all of the different roles in the disclosure. Um, you know, I've been working on the, uh, on the ISO standard for, uh, it was originally started as re ISO standard for responsible disclosure um, proposed by the Canadian national body. And uh, I've been working on that as the U.S. subject matter expert for, um, for, uh, for that particular draft for the past three years. Has that draft changed a lot in the past three years? Absolutely. And in fact, because of uh, you know a suggestion from Jake Coons from Open Security Foundation after uh, the uh, R we talked at, at the RSA panel you know after the RSA panel on disclosure that I was on um, we were able to to bring the idea of dropping the word responsible from you know the title of that that ISO draft and that actually was ratified in April of this year so now it's no longer responsible vulnerability disclosure it's just called vulnerability disclosure but the point is you know that's all evolving you know there's there's some standardization efforts. Is it going to catch everybody? Absolutely not. But you know, we're all trying to move towards, uh, you know, a, a better solution than the one we have now, and it's going to take all of us. You know, there there are a lot of things we could talk about in terms of the definitions of disclosure and the agreements of disclosure, in terms of what is done, in terms of what we call it. I got to be honest, I, I do think de-emotionalizing the subject is unquestionably a good thing. But, um, you know, there's no doubt in the public's mind that there's an irresponsible way to disclose a vulnerability. Hey, I'm going to disclose something by hacking into every website on the planet and publishing, you know, every website is just the exploit. This is clearly an irresponsible way to do things. There's no question that there's an irresponsible way. There's always been a question that there's a responsible way. So I, I have to say I'm kind of nervous about losing the possibility, the admitted and accepted and proclaimed value of disclosure. When we called it responsible disclosure, we at least knew there was a good way to do it. After, I like the de-emotionalization, but I'm a little worried about the loss that it cost us. The so, real question at the end of the day is timelines, though. What is, this, what is the appropriate timeline going to be as a statement of fact? Unquestionably, not all bugs take the same amount of time. But just as equally as a statement of fact, bugs can't have an indefinite timeline to be fixed, or else they just won't be. Right, because they evolve, right? By the time you fix it, it's morphed into something else. So just quickly, and then I'll each, let each one of you do your closing comments. If you will, when you talked about it has to be regulated, right? We were talking about, I actually have to agree with you because I'm just going to point out a couple of quick things from talking from what used to be standards and what used to be guidelines, which are now legislation, right? Let's talk about PCI. It was a standard and a guideline. You didn't really have to do it. And if you violated PCI, you'll get a fine. Well, we all know that those little fines didn't happen until, uh-oh, Heartland came about, right? The big old breach there. So at the end of the day, PCI was a guideline and a standard. It was not a legislation. You didn't go to jail for it, if you will. That now has legislation backing in the state of Nevada, actually. You must be PCI compliant or you break the law, per se. The other thing that I want to bring to attention is HIPAA is another one. It was a standard and a guideline. And now we have HIPAA high trust. So really, we had nice standards, nice guidance, nice guidelines. You can use it. You can adopt it. Let's be universal. And they didn't have enough teeth in them. You couldn't hold people accountable. Now they're being held accountable. So I have to kind of side with Ira here, thinking someday I think there's going to be a level of accountability 
for responsible disclosure. And you wanted to say something real quick. Yeah, uh, well, I do like, uh, I, I think that uh, Dennis uh, is perfectly right and uh, right on the spot because uh, I do like the idea of having, you know, guidelines and uh, community r rules for, for doing things. But still, as a, as a researcher, I do still want to have the possibility if my uh, if my conscience and my ethics asks me to do so to do any kind of disclosure that I feel personally and I, I think that that's an ethic uh, an ethical uh, point so it's just a personal assessment unluckily uh, I, I, I still want to have the freedom to uh, disclose anything that I find in the case that I think that this benefits uh, the community, the users, or uh, the people more than actually keeping it under a strictly regulated process. So I would say that I'm pretty much in favor of uh, de-emotionalizing the thing, creating processes, creating standards, th that thing I like. When you talk about regulation, and I'm European, so I should be the one for regulation <laughs> and not the one against regulation, but when you talk about regulation, that really, really scares me because regulation applied to security disclosure, in my mind, pops up with the DMCA and Ed Felton not being able it's to publish his research. Though, right? It's more okay. than security. Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. Anyway, closing <laughs> comments. Uh, basically, I disagree with Stefano, no, he should not have the right to do whatever he pleases whenever he pleases, because the thing is, he's, he, by disclosing a vulnerability, you're impacting other people, and you're impacting of other people. If you make your rational disclosure and you have no idea what you're talking about, what you're thinking, and you impact society as a whole, you take down 100,000 ATMs or whatever it is just randomly without giving any warning, but it's so important but you create an impact, you should be held liable for the impact that you create because you just had this thought process. Because if you let any idiot go around and say, I have this thought process that I really need this, I, need, I don't have money to pay for it, but I really need it, but it would help me make society so much better. No, you can't go around leaving people to their own wills when there's repercussions to other people. And frankly, I do think the word responsibility should be kept in place in closing because as Spider-Man said, with great power comes great responsibility. And don't think that having vulnerabilities is not power. Vulnerability is knowledge and knowledge is power. And again, when you have the ability to create damage to people you've never seen, they never know you, you have a responsibility to not to create damage, ir well, irresponsibly. And that again- was more than five seconds. Yeah, but- Sorry, I thought you were saying closing remarks. I didn't take my five. I'm just using my closing. So, uh, closing remarks, you know, I, I think that the the variations of opinions, you know, in this are, are really the, the, you know, this is what we have to work through together as an industry, you know. Um, we're not going to get anywhere if we keep talking past each other, you know. So we really do need to, we need to be listening to each other. We need to be respecting each other's opinions. Um, we need to be working towards something better, and that's not something that any one entity in disclosure can decide for another entity. So vendors can't, you know, make call all the shots. Finders can't call all the shots. Coordinators can't call all the shots. So, and regulation is not going to solve that problem, I can tell you that much, you know. Uh, regulation is not going to help us all get along. And this is what we actually need to do. We actually need to take it from a politics focus to a people focus. This is about protecting people. So if we're all on that page, guess what? We're all on the same team. Let's stop fighting about it and work against the real adversary, who are the criminals, who are actually doing no disclosure, right? So let's focus on the actual outcome that we want, which is to get people uh, safer. Of course, we're going to disagree on you know the best and most efficient road to that outcome. That's the point of the discussion. That's the point of coordinated vulnerability disclosure. I think one of the best things that is going on right now in the disclosure debate is that it is actually happening. We're actually discussing what the rules should be. We're actually discussing what the names should be. We're not talking past each other. We're not waving our fingers at each other. There is engagement on both sides. And that is tremendous. It is the thing that we have been missing for some years. It is the thing that we have been suffering for and I'm, I'm so happy to see it happening. So 
I'm just going to leave things at that. I think that was an excellent closing statement that is actually happening and that it's happening on levels where everyone's opinion is being heard. I think you kind of mentioned that. So it can't just be an organization that's been here for 20 years and is dominant. Everyone's opinion matters. Everyone has input. I want to thank the panelists. I want to thank Stefano for his input, Ira for his, Katie for being in the hot seat a lot here. We really appreciate it. And Dan, thank you very much. Um, I don't think that we have any time for questions, but I'm sure that if you corner any one of these individuals, they'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of Black Hat. Thanks a lot.